come to the rink and try and win championships, and that's what it's all about. When you look from the outside and you watch this team, like, I know we're going to have a good, real good, solid hockey team this year. What's up, everybody, and welcome back to Fireside Rangers. I'm your host, Anthony Rivardo, joined by my co-host here, Eric Wilson, with the super zoomed in, zoomed in screens. We're having fun, and that today we're ready to talk about – what's that? Oh, I said that was, like, my bad. I asked, I asked for the wrong oh. reference. <laughs> Let's just restart. Let's restart. That screwed me up. <laughs> What's up, everybody, and welcome back to Fireside Rangers. I'm your host, Anthony Rivardo, joined by my co-host here, Eric Wilson, with the super zoomed-in screen on the video today. That is definitely Eric's fault. Eric will go ahead and take accountability for that one, but we're going to go ahead today and have a good time talking about Capo Caco and the New York Rangers talking about where we think Capocaco is going to be playing on the lines during the opening night matchup against the Tampa Bay Lightning. Now, he's had a pretty interesting time with the New York Rangers, Capocaco. Of course, lots of potential, has yet to realize it. Healthy scratch in the Eastern Conference Finals in Game 6 last year. Now, this summer, he's been playing sometimes with the first line, trying to work him up there, but also a lot of the times it's been the kid line on that third line maintaining their shape that they had last season, which is definitely an interesting point of controversy right here when talking about the lineup for the opening night. But before we dive into all of that, Cabo Caco, where he's going to play, what we think of his performance this summer. Eric, how are you doing today, my friend? Doing good. My, my day's been pretty good until I realized I asked for the wrong graphics. So now we're just zoomed in. <laughs> but it's, it's okay. I'm um, just excited to be here, as always. Yes, sir. Always excited to talk some New York Rangers with you, my friend. But let's go ahead, dive into Capococco now. Capococco last night against the Bruins scored two goals, had a pretty solid performance playing on the third line, on the kid line with Heedle and Lafreniere. So kind of interesting to see him not move up into the top six. We've talked about him quite extensively throughout the summer. Capococco was intended to be playing in the top six by Gerard Gallant. He said that very early on. The goal was to move him and Lafreniere into the top six. And we do think that Lafreniere is going to move into the top six. However, they have been keeping the kid line intact for many of these preseason matchups and many of these practices. All throughout the summer, we've seen a lot of the kid line rather than seeing Lafreniere elevate up to the first line, seeing Cabo Caco elevate up to the second line. Those two have been on the third line rather frequently with Philip Heedle. So, Eric, what are your thoughts on, you know, Gerard Gallant's tactics of keeping those kid that kid line together throughout a lot of these practices and preseason games? And do you think that this is something that's going to continue into the regular season? Or do you think this is just a matter of keeping the chemistry intact and ramping them up for the regular season? See, uh, it's, it's a little confusing at this point for me because we know that Gerard Gallant said he does want to see both Lafreniere and Kako play in the top six. But again, that was at like the very end of last season, which was months ago at this point. So I don't know if that's still his goal, if things have changed. Um, but I feel like if, if they were to move up into the top six and be playing on entirely new lines, you would want to see them play together throughout the preseason when it doesn't exactly like matter at that point. you know. So it's like to see that the kid line is still intact – with one game left in the preseason before we go into like the real games. Um, it makes me wonder like, are they going to get the chance to play in the top six or are they just going to start off back on line three? But you know, it's a, it's a little weird, but again, like the kid line is playing phenomenally. Like I know this video focuses mainly on Capo Caco, but Heedle and Lafreniere have also been playing stellar as well. So yeah, and just to kind of add some context, in today's practice specifically, Capococco did play on the first line. Um, again, it is only practice. But, of course, last night versus the Bruins, you had Kreider, Zibanejad, and VC in the first line, which is definitely an interesting way to go about it. I mean, Jimmy VC is a player that we've talked quite extensively about lately. He's been really impressive. We think that he has absolutely earned himself a spot on the roster for opening night. However, did he earn himself a top line spot? I'm not so sure about that. I think he's probably in the bottom uh, half of the lineup come opening night. But we'll be we'll be curious to see where Capocaco lands because, as you mentioned, yes, today he is practicing with the first line, but a lot of the times he's been playing on the third line like he was last season. So um, another point to make is that before Saturday's game uh, tomorrow, Gerard Gallant said he'll make a final decisions on the lines. Uh, before they get going on Saturday for the final preseason game. Of course, regular season kicking off against the Lightning on Tuesday. We're super excited to cover that here on Fireside Rangers. But I guess we're going to see one last preseason line 
uh, on Saturday, and it'll be curious to see where Capococco ends up landing there. Again, with him practicing with the first line today, um, playing alongside Zabanajed. Uh, Eric, what do you think? Do you think they're going to give him some run in this final preseason game with the first line, or do you think maybe that's just a practice tactic and they're not even going to put him up there during the preseason? I hope that they do because, you know, there, there, there's a big difference between practicing and playing in an actual game. So if it truly is Gallant's intentions for Kako to be in the top six, I think it only makes sense that he plays them in the preseason game just to see how it works. Um, you know, Zibanejad and Kreider up on the first line, they've both played great throughout the preseason as well, as well as Kako. Kako's probably been our best player throughout the preseason. He has two goals, one assist for three points in three games. He's a point-per-game player right now. And again, you know, it's not the real deal just yet, but to be point per game, even in just preseason, means he's still going to put up a lot of points come opening night. And then you put him next to Kreider and Zibanejad, maybe again, maybe he just breaks out this season, becomes point per game. It hits like 80 points this season. But I definitely think that there should be at least one game where he plays fully on the top line next to the boys. I don't even know what's going to happen with Lafreniere at this point. I don't know where he's been all this time, but... I guess we'll just have to, we just kind of got to wait and see. <laughs> yeah, it is kind of a wait and see game. Like I said, final preseason game on Saturday. We'll see what the lines look like there. But I do know that last night it was the kid line completely intact. And there are some fans who are starting to favor the kid line once again and favoring the idea of keeping the kid line intact completely for the regular season. So, Eric, what are your thoughts on that? Do you want to see maybe the kid line remain as a third line? Just keep those three together, keep the chemistry growing, keep them playing together. Or would you rather see Lafreniere and Kako move up in the top six roles? See, I'm I'm torn on this one because at one point it's like I want to see the kid line stay together. They have great chemistry and like it works. So it's like if it if it's not broke, don't fix it kind of thing. But then at the same time, like the third line, you don't get that much playing time. If if we keep players like Lafreniere and Kako locked away down there their entire careers, they're not gonna get the chance to really break out into the players that like they're not gonna be able to reach their ceiling, basically. You know, they might play really well, get like 50 points each on the third line. But, you know, if you put Kako or Lafreniere up on that first line, maybe they're hitting 70, 80. So I guess it's like it's a tough decision to make. I think whatever decision is made, there's benefits to it and and negatives. So (laughs) we just got to Galan's got to weigh his values, see what he thinks will help the team the most. Yeah, I think there's definitely pros and cons to each decision that could be made here. But I will say another kind of wrinkle to add into this. We've actually talked quite a few times here about maybe seeing towards the trade deadline how Capococco and how Filipino are playing at that point and how both of them could potentially be rather valuable trade pieces midseason for the New York Rangers if they want to make a splash. So I think that that's definitely something to factor in when you're talking about whether or not you want those three playing together on the third line. However, I do think that regardless of the case, the third line probably just needs to get more playing time if that's the case, right? If, if the kid line is intact, they, they need to be on the ice more. you got to see more of Capococco. you got to see more of Alexi Lafreniere, more of Filipito this season. Yeah, and that's, again, that's one strategy that teams have used in the past where their top nine forwards are all like pretty much borderline first line players. So they just roll through the top three lines evenly with playing time. And the only negative with that is, you know, Panarin won't be on the ice as much. Kreider won't be, but then it gives the younger guys more time to play as well. So it's really just up to Gallant to see how he wants to divide this ice time at that point, if he's going to keep them all down on the third yeah, and that'll be definitely an interesting decision. And of course, like I said, Capococco has been playing pretty well. He had two goals in last night's game, and a lot of that probably has to do with the fact that he is playing with the players he's familiar with. However, I do wonder if the if the potential of Capococco and Alexi Lafreniere can be maximized by moving them up on the lines. And I think that's mm-hmm. kind of what we're getting to here is that there's just the added uh, factor of maximizing potential, right? You know what you've got with these guys playing on the kid line together. We've seen it work. We've seen how deep it can bring us into the playoffs. But could it potentially be that next level if you move them up onto the top six? And I guess that's the question because also, if you're not moving Capococco and Alexi Lafreniere into the top six, who are you moving into the top six? And if it's Jimmy VC, now Jimmy VC is a veteran guy that's on a PTO right now. We think he's got a roster spot. And we really like what he's brought to the table all summer. But would we really want to see Jimmy VC on the first or second line here? Now, that's kind of questionable to me because I think that he's kind of a player who's just fighting for a roster spot. And he should be fighting for playing time. Having him quickly ascend into the top six would be sort of confusing to me because, again, playing the potential game, I'd rather see what these young guys can do in a 
top six role because their potential is far more vast than it is for Jimmy VC. Jimmy VC has been in the league for a while. Yes, he looks back and better than ever is what we've been saying. However, we kind of know what he is. We know that he's pretty much maxed out his potential. Capo Caco has a lot of time to grow. His potential is not maxed out in the slightest. Same with Alexi Lafreniere. Alexi Lafreniere can truly be one of the best players in the NHL if he continues to develop and play on the top six. But if you leave him stuck on the on the third line, I think that we could potentially risk stunting the growth of both Capo Caco and Alexi Lafreniere. So Eric, what are your thoughts on that? Do you think that this could potentially stunt their growth? And do you think that it would be a kind of silly decision for Gerard Gallant to move a player like Jimmy Vc up into the top six rather than one of these young guys? Yeah, I, I don't, I don't, I wouldn't support that at all. I mean, as I've been saying the entire off season, um, my like perfect lines that I would like would be Lafreniere on the first with Kreider and Zibanej Ed, and then Kako down on the second with Trocek and Panarin. And then, you know, just leave the third and fourth to the other guys like Blake, Goudreau, VC, who like even if VC makes the team at this point, I don't really know what's going to happen there. But I, there, there's no need for these kids to still be locked away down in the bottom six. It's time for them to break out. It's time for them to really show what they're made of. And the only way that they're going to be able to do that is if they're playing with the good guys, like the stars on our team, getting the most ice time. So, yeah. Yeah, and some of the uh, reactions from practice today, here's one that I saw. Well, a lot to unpack with the new lines. Glad kid line was split up. Tough, but it's for the best. I do like having two of them together on the third line, so it'll maintain some balance. Not sure about VC on second line, but maybe better version of Hunt, who did well there, helps. So I guess that's uh, uh, one take on that. Here's another take from a fan on Twitter. Last night, kid line looks good, and if the top six looked good as well, makes sense to keep the kids together. So there are quite a few Rangers fans who are making a push and supporting keeping the kid line intact, which I do think is pretty interesting. So we're definitely curious to hear your thoughts down below in the comment section. Should the Rangers look to keep the kid line together? Or do you think that might stunt the growth of these young guys? Do you think that might hold them back from reaching their maximum potential? Who do you want to see in those top six uh, lines, basically? Let us know down below in the comment section. Me personally, I think it's time to give Capococco and Alexi Lafreniere a chance in the top six. Again, I love the chemistry that the kid line has together, and I do think it's a nice fallback option to revert back to the kid line if it doesn't work out. But I do want to see these guys start off the season in a top six role, see what we can get out of them with more ice time, and see just how well they can play alongside some of the better players on this team like Panarin, like Zibanejad, like Kreider, and so forth. So that's really my take on it. Eric, if you have any last-minute thoughts before we wrap up here. Um, I just want to say the uh, Kako's breakaway goal last night, the chef's kiss is beautiful. I got a quote here at approximately 7:40 PM last night. I texted Anthony and I said, Kako just scored a sexy goal. And then yeah. Anthony said, love to see it. That is a, a beautiful <laughs> quote from my boy, Eric, right there. <laughs> yeah, no, that's good. Good. that pretty much covers everything. I'm in, I'm in full agreement with your, everything that you just said. <laughs> Cool. Cool. That sounds good, man. So of course that's our take on this situation, but we want to hear your take down in the comment section below. Please let us know what you think of Capo Caco, where you think he should play for the Rangers on opening night, what you think the top six lines should look like. And maybe you're in the uh, group that supports keeping the kid line intact. Let us know. We love to talk about it. And maybe next episode we'll talk about why the Rangers should or shouldn't keep the kid line intact. However, I think we're going to be focusing on the lines as a whole soon enough. And we're going to keep you guys posted with many updates, especially as the Rangers finalize their lines ahead of Tuesday's opening night matchup. Super excited to cover all of that right here on Fireside Giants or Fireside Rangers. Make sure to leave a like if you did enjoy this episode. Again, leave those comments down below. Subscribe if you're new to the channel. Lots of updates coming your way. Ring the bell so you don't miss a video. We'll catch you on the next one. Have a good one. And let's go, Rangers. Let's go, Rangers. <laughs> Dramatic pause. He shoots.